Terrific. 6 p.m. on Monday, June 12, 2023, I'd like to call to order the City of Laconia City Council budget meeting. Um, before we go any further, I'm wondering if uh, Park and Recreation um, Director Amy Wilvisic would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I would be honored. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd ask our city clerk to please call the roll. Councilor Susi? Here. Councilor Haynes? Here. Councilor Felch? Here. Mayor Hosmer? Here. Do we need a quorum? Is this a quorum? It is a quorum. Thank you. I'm going to roll right along. We're all joined at council table this evening by City Manager Kirk Biotti and Finance Director Glenn Smith. Um, under agenda item number six, presentation 6A will be the department budget presentation from Parks and Recreation and Facilities. And once again, Amy Levisic, the director, will join us. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. Can you see my screen? I can see you. Oh, you can see me. I don't want oh, you to see me. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I like it much better when all you can see is the screen. <laughs> um, so thank you all for being here tonight. Um, I know it's a beautiful night and you'd rather be elsewhere, um, especially you, Tony. <laughs> um, I'd like to introduce, most of you know Matt Manser, the assistant director, uh, but we also have Dane Anderson, who is our new foreman for the maintenance. Welcome. So I'd like to thank them for being here as well. Um, we're just gonna try and really quickly go through this because I know you have three tonight. A um, Couple of wins for us here uh, at the at parks this year. Uh, pickleball and program participation we'll go over. We'll go over the garage, some park, the parks and rec reputation and spring opening. And with that, I'm gonna give you the pickleball guru. Um, actually. It's four. Pay the check. Yeah, four and the mayor. Four and four councils. Four the mayor is a quorum. So we don't have a quorum. Well, plus the mayor. But we're not voting on anything. We're not voting on anything. We're not voting on anything, so that makes a difference. So, oh, I think, yeah, I think we're in. We can roll right along. No, we just got our fourth. Awesome. Let the, in the hallway. Let the record reflect at 6.03 p.m. Councilor Cheney has joined us. Go <laughs> right ahead. All right, um, so we'll start off talking about uh, uh, pickleball and some of our program growth. Um, and I know you guys, uh, some of you guys have, have had some additional conversations about pickleball, so I'm um, excited to jump into it. Pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America and Laconia and the Lakes region is no exception. Uh, this past year we've had 313 registered to play indoor pickleball this year. Um, 274 of them were residents of the Lakes region uh, whereas 144 of them were from Laconia solely. Um, we've got, we've only got two indoor pickleball courts. Um, so we had to expand our offerings, uh, throughout the winter months, right? So all the yellow times on that schedule there, that's pickleball. So, uh, it went from, uh, three mornings to almost 14 offerings. Um, and we, yes. I, I believe we are offering more pickleball than uh, any other, community in the lakes region. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, although it might not be enough. Um, could we, yeah, I was gonna ask you, could we, do we need more courts? Uh, yes, uh, we've got some, um, some outdoor ones coming in July, um, but I don't think that's gonna help us in the winter months. The, uh, the, the fact that we just have two and we're desperately looking for other spots that we can do an indoor court would you but, consider the third deck of the parking garage with a dome over it? <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be awesome. I think that'd be lovely. Just throwing it out there, okay. Um, you can see on our uh, uh, program growth here, this table, uh, you can see that the additional uh, slots for pickleball has really kind of shown itself in terms of our participation days. Uh, what we did was we took our revenue per year in, ter in terms of these programs and divided <laughs> it by our average uh, uh, cost of coming into play. So you can see pickleball is 
hitting huge, right? So with the with the three two two five number, um, and the, our growth since COVID has been phenomenal, right? But you can see that our growth since pre-COVID numbers has also been really coming along. So um, we're pretty excited about that. We've started a, a strength and stretch program also, which is still in the growing phases, still in its infancy. Um, but we're committed to, to building some fitness classes in, in the community center also. Pickleball could take over entirely. We are trying not to let that happen, right? We're trying to still offer other classes. Um, and this growth kind of has kind of developed some good problems to have, right? There's some, some problems which are good problems to have because of the growth. Uh, the big ones being parking. Um, this was just Wednesday during line dancing. Um, and it's, we've exhausted our parking spaces throughout the, the community center. Uh, some people are starting to park at Rite Aid or some other places and walking over. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's a secret. <laughs> um, yeah, and we also are starting to see more like wear and tear uh, throughout the gym. So this is a photo of our uh, storage door, which we had to replace this year. We had a um, overzealous pickleballer go running into it, right? But we replaced that one. Um, some of our uh, curtains are just starting to get used a, a lot more than they have. And, and I mean, the building's over 100 years old. So uh, a lot of this stuff is just old stuff that we get to, to replace. Um, the money that we use to replace this stuff is, is coming out of a revolving fund that's coming straight from pickleballers, basketballers, right? So that money just comes right back in. It goes into replacing this stuff. It refinishes the floor. I'm hoping by the end of, let's say, fiscal year 24, we have enough in that account to do new bleachers, which are, which are old, right? Um, and finally, the, the next good problem to have is playing time. Um, we're starting to see as many as 30 basketball players come on Tuesday night. Um, 30 means that's one, you get to play one game out of every three games, right? Which is, it, it's a lot of people coming, it's a good problem to have. Um, we'll, we'll see as many as 25 pickleballers come in the morning. Uh, for reference, Right now with the outdoor courts, 18 pickleballers is considered too many. That's considered like, you don't wanna go over that number, right? So we'll have 25, sometimes that number will push up a little bit more um, and we'll get the complaints that A, not enough playing time, but B, uh, I'm playing somebody who's on a different talent level than me, right? And so now I gotta wait for these games and then when I finally get on there, I don't get to have a good competitive matchup because of the difference in skill level, right? Um, what do you think the solution is? You've outgrown your space, you don't have enough parking, you got a demand for <clears throat> all of the courts, not enough courts. Uh, what's, yeah. the, what's the solution? Uh, new community I, center. I think we need a new community center. I think, and I, I, I know that's such a big, that's a huge plan, right? But that's, that's what everything is kind of pointing towards. Hmm? Go right ahead, Councilor Susie. If you're open for more questions, just not. Shh. Are you open for this? Yeah, of course. Is it okay? Of course. Okay, I thought Amy said no. I oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have residents that are playing pickleball. We also have non-residents. Is there a difference in fees? Yes. Yeah, we charge. Um, a, we give a dollar discount, so we charge uh, four dollars in the morning, and then it, 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 our our formula is like a dollar per half hour so we charge four dollars for a two-hour session and then we give a dollar off for Laconia residents so that's yeah but yeah and if we can't find more indoor courts and we can't you know I, I know the community center is a, a super long-term plan right um, we might have to limit indoor pickleball to Laconia residents only um, just to, to, to give alleviate that that pressure there Right ahead. Yeah. Um, is there anything we could do with the schools? I mean, even parking. You've got the high school right there with parking. Um, in the meantime, yeah. I'd like to see a new community center, too, but that's <laughs> not going to happen down, you know, yeah, right. tomorrow. Um, and maybe work with the schools with their gyms and try yeah. to get something in one of the schools. The, the yes. I, I, yes, and um, 
the schools are asking us for gym space also. So I know there's a lot of like demand for indoor spaces during those winter months, whether it's label or school basketball. Um, that turn from winter to spring is super tight. So uh, like lacrosse teams, the youth lacrosse teams are looking for indoor spaces at that time. Um, it, yeah, there's, there's, I mean, you, you hear people talk about uh, uh, an indoor sports complex all the time. a smaller court. I don't know how high the balls actually go up in the air, but how about a cafeteria or something like that? Something yeah, to look yeah. Into, anyhow. yeah, right, for sure. Um, yeah, I think we, we jumped into kind of the things I wanted to come in here, like what is the what is the role? If we did have to go to Laconia residence only during the uh, during the, the indoor months, we might come and, and look for some guidance from this group here, just because um, yeah, we might upset some some local local friends and neighbors. But a lot of the locals play folks from other towns. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and you know, um, what if they want? To, what if I'm, me as a resident wants to bring a friend? Right? Like, are we saying no to that? Or maybe they have family up? It's there's just some, some things that are be a little tough. One other question. I, I'm looking at the budget, but I don't see any line item here. And maybe this is a uh, line item for any, uh, the, uh, that revolving fund you talked about where, where uh, you got money coming account? in. That's the user <coughs> fee, and it's not in the budget. So where is it? That's a Glenn right. question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the user fee is what's called a special revenue fund. So the money goes, it was designated in a prior year um, to be come from these programs to be used to support the programs. So it doesn't uh, come to the council on a year after year basis, okay. as long as it's used for that purpose. So maybe the wrong term. So where's the accountability? Oh, um, well. It I keep a close eye on them. <laughs> and it the has auditor. its own uh, set of rules. So it has to go through the commi my commission before it can be spent. Uh, you ever on that commission? No. No. Good. <laughs> 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 I have I've pretty much taken over as the liaison for Parks and Rec. But yes. It, it is reported to the um, Parks and Recreation Commission um, Department on a monthly basis. And then it's also, as far as overarching accountability, is part, a part, of course, of our annual audit. Okay, that was my final question. Yeah, that's final audit. Okay, that's thank all, you. That's all documented. Yeah, right. Okay. Can I just ask, getting back to Pit, of course. Mr. Mayor? You may. Uh, talking about pickleball, because you know I've spoken to you two or three hundred times about pickleball. Because <laughs> um, I've got constituents who are... Uh, pounding on the door, so to speak. Um, I was uh, shown a uh, a outdoor tennis court or whatever it was that had a dome built over it. Uh, the impression I got that it wasn't frightfully expensive. Recognizing heat would be an issue, but maybe the pickleball <coughs> would be able to pick up the cost of the heat. That said, would you at least look to see what it would cost to cover, say, uh, Memorial Park or whatever works for you, but see if we can't get some more winter courts. Because I think the growth of pickleball is going to compete with the, the growth of basketball and other indoor sure. uh, requirements. So if we could think of a way to, to uh, cover up one of the outdoor courts and, and use it, I think that would help solve some of our problems. Couldn't. Now, are you thinking with walls and then Yeah, it was it? like a tent, you know. Uh, I, okay. The one I saw. I'll, like we have I, a DPW for the, the salt storage. Yeah, Is that I'll, what you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, something okay. like that. I'll see if I can find the picture I was shown, and I will send it to you. So that would be great. I've not seen that picture. I thought you were referring to something else that was sent, I think, to maybe to all of you. Um, to reconfigure the, the courts at Memorial that we're having redone. Um, and we have decided it, there's no skin off our teeth to, to do it the way they asked us to do, um, which means instead of putting a pickleball court on each individual tennis court, 
We are now using only three tennis courts and we're having a pickleball court on either side of the net uh, using two courts and then one court will use the net because they, they don't like using the tennis net isn't a pickleball net. The height difference is, is significant. Um, so they have asked us to do that in addition to purchasing a lockbox and um, some portable nets and we have decided to, to go ahead and do that. And there's no additional fee to change the layout of, of what we've already set up with Vermont Rec when they come and resurface the, the courts. So we are, we are doing what we can at, at the moment. So. If you could just look at. Uh, yeah, if you'll send me that, I would. I, I'd, I'd be happy to just. Thank you. See if we might be able to do something. Perfect. Um, another win, sorry. I knew is there a chance that. that is there any room to expand down a Memorial Park? Yes. Another quick question: Has anybody looked at maybe using Sacred Heart Auditorium? No. Well, uh, no. That's a gym. It's always been there. <coughs> I'm not sure that they use it all the time. Right. But that would be a that would be a venue to look at. Yep. Yep. Just I have one last question. Amy, is, is a pickleball court about the same size of a racquetball court? Uh, it is a little bit bigger. So I can't use my racquetball court, unfortunately. Okay, because I have two racquetball courts that could have used maybe. So, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm going to try and rush through these. I know we're, we're on a time crunch. A um, couple other big wins was the um, maintenance garage. Um, the maintenance garage has been in the uh, CIP for multiple years to have it redesigned and built because we were outgrowing. However, looking to alter things and with the possible new community center coming, um, we didn't want to take this step and then backpedal. Um, so our new foreman, Dean, um, he empowered our team to reorganize in some areas and redesign the functionality in other areas and this is what we get now it's a little bit better don't you agree um, we didn't lose everything as you can see the bottom left still a little congested um, we didn't we didn't all of a sudden fit into our our area where we just made it a little bit more streamlined so thank you for that we're stretching our dollar uh, spring openings really quickly you remember the 90 degree spring we had um, well, at, a, at that point, everybody said, well, why aren't the bathrooms open? And why aren't the, the baseball fields open? And why aren't the tennis courts open? And it was just one day it was snow, and the next day it's 90 degrees, and we weren't ready. <laughs> um, but the crew did an amazing job, and I want to thank them more than I can even say it out loud. Um, they, they hustled, and they got everything ready, and we've never been open quicker than we were this year. So well done. Um, another win is our reputation in the city. Surprisingly, we're getting some shout outs on Facebook. It doesn't happen all the time, as you know, we can't please everyone, but we're getting a lot of um, people appreciating the fact that these things are happening and, and they are very much um, liking us now. I'm sure tomorrow it'll be different. Um, so I just want to remind you all of this screen. Um, we've been talking about this for three years now. Um, we can attribute a lot of those wins to the fact that you guys have increased our budget significantly. Um, and that's because you, you saw this five year uh, layout through the NHRPA uh, study that was done in 2021. And you saw how we measured up. Of course, they redid the study this year. We were doing so well. Um, we used the April 2020 census for Laconia population, which was 16,871. I'm not sure that's an accurate number, uh, but it's what we had to go by. <clears throat> um, it was also when COVID started, and I, I just think the numbers are way off, just so you're aware. Um, but these are some of the numbers. And please understand that our park sizes have not changed. <laughs> um, our population has. So the red numbers are where we are now in comparison to the infograph um, 
up at the top, and then the bottom number is our last year's number, where we compared last year. So obviously this does not include our summer residents. Uh, this is the new national median number that we're striving towards. Um, please keep in mind that this does not include, this 5769 does not include buildings. It never has, um, and I don't believe it should because it's not representative with Parks and Rec. Typically, I don't know any other um, Parks and Rec that does facilities, meaning the buildings, not, not facilities outside, but meaning the buildings. So it's never had that, and I don't want you to think that that's included. Uh, this is where we were last year. Um, so with that, um, the question is, with this graphic, do we want to aim towards the lower quartile? because that's where we are, headed towards, which would be great. <laughs> um, or are we looking at the median for our location or our population numbers? So this is where we started in FY21 with the 4883. We went up to 5014. Last year, the final budget was 5769. This year we proposed 63.95 and the city manager recommended 60.08. Uh, that increase, it's 4.15%. Um, what that looks like is a new facilities person. This person who Kirk would like me to refer to as the facility dude, um, which I get a kick out of because that's our work order software. Um, this person would be hired on in October to save that couple of months um, salary. Uh, and this person would be responsible for all work orders that come in that are facility related, um, building related, inside, outside, that kind of thing. Not the mowing, not the, not the cleaning up of the, of the snow, but fixing stair treads <clears throat> and lights and people counters and things like that, um, as well as deferred maintenance, which by the way, we have a lot of. Um, we, it also it will go towards outside contracts. Um, it will go towards cleaning of the bathrooms. A company comes in and helps us during beach season, takes that burden off of our department, which is a huge help. And thank you very much for allowing this the last couple of years. Um, we are able to put our, put our guys onto the actual parks, which helps us. A, a great amount. This year the increase is for the peripheral locations that we own, um, that we maintain, that you probably don't even know that we have, um, and then also <clears throat> maintaining what we, what we have and keeping things great. So here's the deferred maintenance list. Now this is a little funny anecdote for you. Uh, at, speaking with the, the two gentlemen here, we were talking about deferred maintenance and what we, what we have and what we need to get done because we haven't done it yet. Keep in mind, our parks technicians are inside and outside right now, but if you call me and say I have a light out, do I stop mowing OPG field to come change your light? This is where we run into the, the problems. Um, so I asked Dane, I said, can you just get me a couple things that we have for deferred maintenance? He says, all right, here's a couple. It's just something I had off the top of my head, and that's that list. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be a couple, and it's this huge long list, and it's just the things he had off the top of his head. So Can it's, you send that to us? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's not complete. It was just a, a snapshot. Pieces, well, I wanna be able to read what the different yeah. maintenance is. Absolutely. You have uh, some sort of prioritization of that as well. Yes. Uh, so this is just a, a quick screenshot of um, our work orders for facilities themselves, buildings. One, one more oh, yes. Do you have any cost estimates that go with the deferred maintenance? No. I think we'd like that too. Okay. And I would say add anything that you think of going along.
Keep thinking, Dane. I was just saying that was just a handful of things that, you know, like, oh, take a half hour to just write a couple of these things down. <laughs> There's a lot more. Uh, so this is just a quick shot of our facility dude um, and it what we did was we just wrote down the buildings the seven buildings that we have and then so this number is misleading in that it's also outside so you're mowing your pruning of a shrub your winter maintenance so shoveling and checking walks every single day so that's in there so please understand that that's it's a little bit misleading um, so the bathrooms, obviously, getting cleaned again, and the peripheral spots, if you're interested. Um, this is a picture of Three Mile Island, which is what we call Three Mile Island. It's across from North Country Deli. It's the three little spots there. Um, nobody knows that's Parks and Rec. You know, uh, the northern triangle at Pleasant Street, that's us. <laughs> um, a small area on Church Street, the corner of Messer and Union, all of that is us and it's it's not the best use of our time and so that's something we'd like to put on outside contract. Yeah, but also the may I mean, fire stations right there too right yep and so that's an easy one for us uh, another easy one for us is oh which one didn't I do uh, Blackstone Square um, because we're right there at Weir's Beach so it, it can't hurt to just stay and, and do a spot it's the it's the getting in and getting out and unloading and that kind of thing that that takes a lot of the time um, and then we're, we're we're maintaining what we have and we're maintaining it well I'd like it known that there's no filter on this picture <laughs> um, and you can tell that because on the bottom where the the long jump is it's not fertilized there and you can tell the difference um, so I just wanted to show you what we do well. <laughs> then we're talking capital improvements, and I'll really quick. Um, the ones with the arrows are the ones that are recommended by the, the city manager, and we'll get right into those. The first one is the Smith Track refurbishment. Um, according to Cape and Island, who put the track in for us 10 years ago, said that we needed to do this uh, resurfacing or refurbishment between eight and ten years this year will be ten years um, my concern if we don't approve this one is what's going to break down if we don't do it and we'll have more costs I'm gonna oh, one more um, we're looking to replace the Robbie Mills uh, baseball scoreboard it's breaking down I'm going to invite Dane up to talk about our sports field equipment and our commercial turf care. Thank you, Amy. <clears throat> Good evening, Council, Mayor, City Manager. Thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, tell you a little, about, a little bit about our uh, departmental needs uh, at my very first Council meeting. <clears throat> So the first item I will talk about is the replacement of our 2006 Toro Bunker Rake. It's our workhorse uh, for grooming our ball fields. Um, in addition to that, our uh, donated residential lawn tractor that we used most of last season while our Toro was down uh, waiting for replacement parts uh, has sensed bit the dust, uh, so to speak. Um, so which one, the replacement or the original? The, repl the, uh, the lawn tractor that we are using to uh, um, supplement for our, uh, our Toro That's bunker no rake. Longer, that no longer can yeah, be Yeah, we no longer have that. So Is the other one back online? The other one's back online as of last fall. Uh, it's going strong uh, for the most part uh, until, you know, the next issue with it. So what we, uh, we have selected is this particular piece. Um, uh, that we have on the screen and uh, for the fact that it uh, it will serve as not only our primary go-to for our um, ball field grooming and our sports fields uh, maintenance uh, but it also has the capability to be applied elsewhere throughout our park system uh, with several at uh, optional attachments um, which we've included uh, this piece can be applied to aid in uh, such projects and tasks as seeding and fertilization aeration gravel and path maintenance uh, 
edging, <clears throat> excuse me, grading and packing projects uh, throughout many of our uh, properties, uh, all while using just one piece of equipment. The second item I'm here to talk to you about is uh, the fact that uh, our commercial mowing fleet is aging uh, and many units are beginning to <clears throat> fail us, have already failed or have become cost prohibitive to repair. Um, throwing money, good money at bad, you know, we're looking for replacements rather than going down that route. Uh, featured here on the left is our 2001 48 inch zero turn mower. Uh, aside from all the difficulties that you might expect from a 20 year old mower, the bagging attachment failed us last fall and was determined to be too expensive uh, to justify replacement. Uh, and the one thing that you can't see on the picture is the zip ties holding the collection bags together. Um, in addition uh, to that, we lost a 72-inch Hustler right on mower, 1997, uh, the middle of last season. We have a 2005 48-inch uh, walk behind with a failed exhaust system uh, that's chronically leaking hydraulic uh, fluid. Um, from some failing hydraulic motors, uh, as well as a 2010 uh, 52-inch <coughs> zero-turn mower, again, um, with a failing bagging system. It's already had, you know, uh, frame issues that have had to be repaired as well. Um, so it just means a whole lot of extra hands-on work for the crew, um, a lot of uh, extra time and uh, effort that uh, uh, could be spent, um, you know, elsewhere keeping things clean. So, um, and we're not technically able to really get our jobs done that we need to get done. Um, I could go on, but those are just a few of the things that we're looking to try and replace. Uh, I'll give it back to Amy and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, the last capital improvement that we are looking for is an ADA design of Tardif Park. And once it's designed and constructed, that park will be completely ADA inside and out, completely ADA accessible. Um, so what does the future of Laconia Parks and Recreation look like? Um, we talked about where we are, where we stand. Um, and what we'd like to know is what it looks like if we get to the 120. Now, we understand that's a ball, that's, that's, that's a dream, um, but I can dream. Um, what I'm looking for is to see what you guys would dream. I would want to know, and not right now, um, but sometime over the next year or two years or 10 years, what you wanna see our department look like. Um, how do you want it to change? How do you want it to grow? How do you want it to um, interact with your residents? So I would be um, completely honored if you would swing by the community center, come talk to me, um, catch me at a park, call me, uh, whatever you'd like, um, have conversations with me, see, see where we can go, what we can do, and, and I'd love to hear your dreams. Um, these are these are just a couple of ideas. Yes, I put the community center on there. Um, these are just some some dreams. If we were to get to that two million dollar line, um, you know, let Councilor Lippman interject. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think as a starting point, we really need to understand um, not just these benchmark numbers, but um, running parks and rec like a professional s service firm would would run it. So we have metrics that we can sort of evaluate and go by there's a lot of good work that's being done um, there are times over over periods of time there's been variable um, you know in terms of park readiness and whatever but really to for the council to to consider your dreams i think we need to understand that it's being operated like a like we get metrics from the police department or the fire department um, that are much more um, what type of metrics would you be looking for? Well, I think w that's your profession. I guess from a managerial standpoint, it's it all is is a bunch of 
Yeah, we, we, we can sit down and have those discussions and kind of come up with I think we need that as a basis to be able to, because it's not just about your dream or our dream, it's about the public and what they're willing to feel like they're willing to pay for. Now, it's obvious like a 20-year-old piece of equipment doesn't work, that needs to be replaced, but, you know, what is the productivity option of replacing it with um, equipment A versus equipment C, <laughs> you know? If, if this allows you to, to cover twice the ground, you know, that may be the right investment there. But I think we got to get the sort of the basics down as a starting point uh, before we can do the dreaming part. <laughs> okay. Because it sounds like, you know, you have, you have a lot to address in deferred maintenance. You have a lot to address in equipment. Those, to me, are the fundamentals and the basics of, of where we need to be before we can do sort of dreaming. <laughs> it's my opinion. I mean, if I might, I have two questions, and you and I have had some conversations, but uh, I was hoping you could kind of tell us uh, what your park technicians will be, those that are on staff will be doing in the winter, uh, assuming this new job person comes on board. Um, I am I am not concerned at all. There will be a lot of maintenance that not, still has to be done. Um, the parks technicians are also still doing the parks checks, the walk checks. Um, they're removing snow. They're doing all kinds of different maintenance projects. Um, so what this would th what this would do is give an opportunity if there was a big project for this one person to try and accomplish, we would push that off for the winter and have the entire group working on that one project. And there are many that we could be doing. The other question I had for you was, <clears throat> which facility makes the highest demand for your maintenance? Um, for our maintenance, I, I do have that. Um, so again, we do, we do have uh, Facility Dude, which literally it's called Facility Dude. It wasn't, I wasn't kidding. Um, and looking at buildings themselves, the library has the most um, work orders with City Hall coming in second, but City Hall includes all the voting as well. And we're talking 60 work orders within, the, within this fiscal year, um, so that's beginning of June, um, and 53 for City Hall, but um, 12 of those, at least 12 of those being voting set up and tear down. So, so those are repair type maintenance? Correct. That's a light out in this office. Uh, need to build a desk in that office, build a chair, put up bookshelves. So, so a good example would be the number of square feet that a person is supposed to be able to, I mean, you've been a facility yeah, exactly. before. Exactly, you're right, you're right on. Uh, and, and so I think it, those kind of, the work You may want to be careful. Of, I'm sorry? I'd say you may want to be careful because I have a suspicion when we actually see the demand per square foot. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, to have no kind of metrics. I'm, 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 yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree with you, yeah. Henry. I, yeah. I just, my observation would be that, that they, they do more than most public works or uh, uh, parks and recs that I've seen, and I've seen a few over the years. Um, well, so most parks and recs don't have buildings and maintenance. No, that, so. exactly. Well, right. yeah, that's another that's another whole topic yeah, of right. conversation but but i think henry's question is very valid no i think if the if the standard is one person per thousand square feet or right. five thousand square feet mm -hmm. and we got 50 then maybe we're short so i, I think that's a yeah. legitimate request on his part I, I think those numbers will help you yes <laughs> and i think kirk can yeah. help you work you on that yeah, yeah. Yep. good are there any other questions? Yes. Um, Tardif Park is going to be ADA. Correct. Where are the rest of the parks? Um, Weir's Beach, uh, once I get two more um, ADA accessible picnic tables, will be completely um, ADA accessible as well. It has the mat going down to the water's edge um, that was installed last year. And the bathrooms are all ADA. And so now I just need the, the two picnic tables and I will be done. OK. May I, ma'am? Um, last year I mentioned an inventory of playground equipment. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've done it or not, but my concern is I look at the budget, there's X amount of money. I'm, 
not convinced that $15,000 is going to go very far on playground equipment. My concern is that we don't get in the position that we were at Wyatt Park, that if we need to have re replace something, we're going to replace it. And if we schedule it, then we're going to know in, you know, next year, two pieces at Levitt Park need to be replaced. Uh, next year, or, or the year after that, a piece at Tar a Wyatt Park, so that we don't get into a crisis situation. That crisis that stuff situation was because of vandalism, not because of deferred maintenance. Yeah, I know. I, I wasn't referring to that. Okay. But my point is, that stuff is expensive. Very much so. And $15,000, I don't even think, would buy a piece of equipment. Well, is it some of this on CIP? No, if I can just jump in, there's also some carry forward from this year, uh, 25000 that was not able to get spent okay. on revitalization of playgrounds that's being moved forward as well right, uh, and you. added to that. Yep. Great. Is, is, excuse me. Isn't there some items on the capital improvement, capital, the capital program? Not in this year. Not year's. this year's. Not, not this, this year's. Year. It, well, it was requested, but it wasn't. Um, and... Uh, it's not public knowledge, but we put in a grant for Levitt Park. Um, that was the first item on your CIP, and we might be getting that grant. Um, it's to replace the playground. We haven't come because we haven't received it. Um, replace the playground, um, redo the walking trail, do a bunch of things interior of the of the building as well as building the gazebo that the Levitt Park group was looking to buy um, or purchase or put in install um, so all of that might be paid for uh, through this grant with 15 percent but that 15 percent is going to be used by the Levitt Park group as well as the trust fund so it won't come out of the city's budget but still we'd like to know about these grants all the other departments come to us for these it, it Keep but it hasn't gone through yet. Right. If I could just jump in, we, it was a little bit of a, that was my call. It was a little bit of, well, I would say more than a little bit of a long shot. Um, but it was a last minute request that we had less than a week, I think, to get it in. They got it in. Um, and just as of the end of last week, uh, we got an email saying uh, it's almost there. It, it went very quickly. So it is coming. I wasn't able to get it on this agenda or would have been on tonight's oh, agenda. Roughly. 300 and some change 460 400. something yeah. and Levitt Park community volunteers are paying the match that's needed as well as the trust fund right yes. but it be used without throughout the city no just at Levitt Park just at Levitt Park yes and what's the total amount for the grant I believe it's 462 does that sound 462,000 right? yes it has to be put into the the budget as a an item I was gonna bring it in as a separate grant request not included not to be included in the anticipated grants I can add it last minute but it wasn't uh, this again it's only it actually I think we were I think this had already been completed with the anticipated grants prior to it even opening hmm. I guess so, procedurally I just want to make sure we do it appropriately because we've had some issues in the past on how Grants come in after the fact, so I think we ought to just review our manual of procedure on. on yeah, no, I'll be glad to. I just treated it as the same way as if I had a grant open up in the middle of the year for something else. Um, the, generally, historically, how we do it, but I'll be glad to go back yeah, and I mean, the, take a look at it for you. It's a lot more steps to do, to do it that way as opposed to do it up front and put it in as an anticipated grant into the budget to begin with. Right. Yeah, go ahead. I just uh, step in to reiterate what, what uh, city manager had said. Uh, I can tell you at the time that this list was put into your hands, that grant was not on the table. That's, that's okay, but okay. we haven't adopted the budget yet, so there's still time to amend yep. the budget to include yep. it. So Yeah, we can do that. Uh, Amy, I don't mean to cut you short. Are you yeah. finished? I, I apologize to you two for taking so long yes I am thank you very much for having are there us. any other are there any other questions for the director before she wraps up just uh, thank you and your staff for everything you do thank you thank you Amy. thank you thank you very much uh, next up on our agenda
uh, on a budget presentation and his finance and Glenn Smith, our finance director. Welcome. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good evening, Mayor and Council. I timed this out uh, earlier today at about 20 minutes, so I'm going to make it even shorter. How's that sound? Great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are we good? I don't see it up here. Oh, there we go. Okay. So uh, thank you for this opportunity to present the FY24 Finance Department uh, budget proposal. I'm going to skip around throughout the, the book quite a bit because there's a lot of ground to cover and it's uh, kind of disjointed just because of the nature of we do uh, many different things. We're going to be covering the uh, fiscal division, employee benefits, insurance, general fund debt, IT, general fund non-tax revenues, anticipated grants, welfare, and the tax and increment financing districts. Would you just call out the pages when you jump around, please? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a little overview. Within the finance department, we operate in six function areas, fiscal, HR, purchasing, tax, IT, and welfare. You'll see a little asterisk, of course, in tax because with the combination of the city clerk tax collector position, of course, those duties are divided between those two departments. Organizationally, it's still within the finance department. And a lot of the uh, financing for that function is within the finance department. Moving to page 38 in your hymnal. <laughs> there we go. Uh, covering the, the fiscal division, starting with that. We're looking at the budget here for all of the salaries within the department, except for welfare, and all of the operating expenses, except for welfare and IT. Uh, part of my cutting this down from 20 minutes, I won't read through this list, but here's a list of just the uh, various functions covered within the uh, fiscal division, ranging from cash management to budget management to managing grants to HR to purchasing to <coughs> risk management, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of, um, a lot of different functions covered within, these, uh, within the office. This is the first of what I too call the contact slides for the finance department. Two numbers, 81.86 represents the accumulated experience of the people in the finance department in their current positions as of January 1st, 2021. Same statistic for May 1st, 2023, that has dropped to 29 years of combined experience within the, within the positions that people are holding now. Uh, retirements, people moving on to uh, greener pastures, uh, other uh, kind, of, kind of turnovers. We've had some long-term employees switch from one function to another. And you're going to see that this, this, this decrease in cumulative years of experience is going to show up in two places in the budget we're about to look at. I will say as we move into that, we have an excellent crew in the finance department. We have the right people, and as I always say, you can always train the right people. And we have the right people, we have a good, good team there. So on page 38, what you'll see is an overall decrease in the fiscal division of just over $5,800. Uh, salaries are down by $2,100, and this is after we factor in the COLAs and step increases that have happened recently. That's where we're getting back to. It's a less experienced workforce, and the budget is reflective of that. <coughs> on the operating side, we're down by about $3,700. Decreases in phone and some contractual uh, lines offset partially by increases in training and conferences, reflecting that change in, in experience level. We have a great crew. We want to keep it that way, get them the training then, uh, that they need to provide both for today and for succession planning in the future. Because I can tell you there's some of us who aren't that far away, so there you go. Moving on to employee benefits on page 42. Um, apply use benefits for comply with regulations and also to keep Laconia competitive in what is, we all agree, is a very competitive labor market right now. Uh, Social Security, we're seeing an 8.6% 8 8 increase, uh, reflective solely on the changes in the salary lines that we've had to implement in order to keep us competitive over the last uh, few months. 
Health insurance, a 0.7% increase. Overall, the rate has increased by 6% this year, and we're attributing the lesser amount because of the, the plan selection as new people come on board who might not have the, fam the expensive family plans and choosing other, other plans. That is a constantly moving target. Dental insurance appears as its own line in the FY24 budget. As you know, that was new in FY23 and folded into the health insurance line. Finally, retirement is up by about 2.7%, uh, reflective of salary increases, offset by the reduction in Group 1 uh, rates, effective July 1st. From an accounting standpoint, health insurance and dental insurance are very different. Can we keep those in separate lines so that we can monitor that going forward? That's exactly what we're going to do moving forward. Uh, dental insurance, I won't say it was added at, at the last minute, but it was kind of a, and we did, we just dumped it. And so, and in fact, I'll say uh, it's budgeted in, the, in one account. We account for it in two separate accounts. So we're tracking it differently this year as we, as we speak right now. Thank you. Staying on page 42, insurance lines. Unemployment insurance is down to a credit that has been applied by our insurance company, Primex. Uh, that's good news on the unemployment. Bad news is up for the workers' comp and property and liability, uh, both in situations where the um, where a we're in a credit in the current year, which we are not certain is going to be available in the upcoming year, and so that is not reflected in the in the budget. Moving on for, to general fund debt on page 47. The highlights in this budget area, um, the good news is we're retiring two uh, bonds, a 2002 capital improvement bond and a 2012 fire engine uh, salt shed bond, uh, partially offset with the uh, 2022 tote bond, which of course uh, was new this year. Overall, a decrease in general fund debt expense going into 2024 of 3.7%. What that does not include, of course, is the ISF um, payment for the fire engine bond, uh, which is also in this page, but it's just further down, not part of the general fund. Also, it's not on this um, right now is the bond for the sanitary sewer fund uh, capital improvements that was discussed this spring. And the reason being is that we don't expect that expense to hit until 2025. So it'll be in next year's budget, not in this year's budget. The second of my context slides. Before oh. the, mm -hmm. In terms of the capital budget and proposals, I know um, fire engines and ambulances were discussed at prior meeting. Is, yes. is there, they're not assumed in 24 budget? Is that Just the new fire engine is, not the new ambulances. The new ambulances were the, similar to how we did it in the past, where there's been money put aside um, to start those payment processes, what I'd be looking forward to do, like we did two and a half, three years ago now, in, in starting those out. So not bonded that same way, at least in this year's budget, unless we decide to do something different next year, but the fire engine, yes. Okay. I guess we don't have to get into it right now. I'd like to <coughs> discuss that a little bit further at some point. Yep. So would I. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'll set to move on. Mm-hmm. Okay. On your left, making the comparison between IT and aviation technology. That's what aviation technology looked like 100 years ago. On your right is what aviation technology looks like today. IT is going through the same process in a much more compressed time scale. Um, I think the point being that uh, the day that uh, uh, you can manage an IT network based on even if fixing bicycles is your day job, um, you know, those days are long gone and this budget is going to reflect that. We have a team, an in-house IT team of two people, two excellent employees who have a very um, broad range of experience and do a great job managing the network. They will be the first to tell you, as they have told me several times, they are not network engineers. They are not system engineers. They're very good at handling help desk um, type issues and minor issues and major to us, minor to them, connecting uh, items to the 
uh, to the network and keeping the network functioning. When it comes down to uh, dealing with the more complex issues that we're getting now between the interrelationship between our VPN and our multi-factor authentication and how that all comes together, um, that goes beyond that. And like I say, they're the first to announce that. Um, so this is kind of how the budget reflects in IT support. IT support is, uh, is thought of in four different levels. Um, moving up in complexity, low, uh, five counting level zero, which is what you and I can do, at least what I can do, make sure that things plugged in. That's level zero IT support. Um, other than that, basic help desk, more advanced help desk handled in-house. But when we get uh, questions like, uh, why is Clerkworks not working after the latest Microsoft update last Wednesday night? We come in on Thursday and all of a sudden it's not working. Those are the kind of questions that we turn to some of the experts to help us with. And that's where um, the experts being a company called Nesset, a managed service provider who does have systems engineers, who does have network engineers on staff. And they round out and help take us to the next level as far as IT support is concerned. Um, and when we talk about IT support, we're talking about everything we do today. I mean, we have tablets sitting here, we have tablets uh, you know, out in the water department, we have tablets down at the weirs, things that didn't exist five years ago. Uh, so it's a rapidly growing, rapidly evolving situation, 17 locations, 129 users, 153 PCs, 53 mobile devices, 26 servers, all connected. I call it a hodgepodge, they have more official things between VPN, dark fiber, internet connections, it all has to come together. All these moving pieces have to come together to keep, uh, keep us working. Page 22 is where you get to the IT budget. You'll see an overall increase of $79,600. More than half of that, $45,000, is replacing um, some of those 153 PCs and laptops. We have a total of 70 PCs that are old enough that they cannot be updated to Windows 11. Windows 11 is a new operating system that's going to be released. Uh, actually, that's out there now. Um, but in October of 2025, Microsoft will no longer be supporting Windows 10. No more patches to, to fix cybersecurity problems uh, or any other problems that come up um, with, with Windows 10. So all of those computers are going to be, I won't say useless, but open and vulnerable as of October 25. The budget proposes for replacing half of them this year. That's what this $45,000 is. The other half in 2025, so that we'll be ready for that turnover in October of 25. Uh, also an increase in $76,000 for the MSP contract that we had talked about earlier. Uh, that's a bad news. The good news is that there are two offsets for that. $15,000 reduction in project development because now the MSP is handling that and a $33,000 increase in security because now the MSP is handling that. Um, and of course the best news is that they are 24-7. Our two-term, two-person team is not. So we're getting better service for that. Net cost of the MSP is $27,000, which uh, is a good deal for what we're getting from that. Moving on again to general fund non-tax revenues. Uh, I gotta say this part of the presentation changed a lot in the last 24 hours um, because it had uh, uh, it referred to the state budget, which of course was in flux until, I guess technically it's still in flux, but it's kind of coalescing I think faster than anybody had thought. What I can tell you for sure is that what is in the book you got in April is not what's going to be in the, in the budget, uh, in the state budget. And I know the city manager and uh, the school superintendent, and we're all working together to, to work out the final uh, implications of the state budget on the city budget. But that is not going to be discussed tonight because those are still discussions that are in place. Uh, so setting that part aside, just want to say on general fund non-tax revenues, about 80% of it comes from three sources, licenses and permits, charges for services and intergovernmental funds, funds from the state, highway block grant, rooms and meals tax. 
those services and then uh, some others on the side. Motor vehicle registrations is a bright spot. They've been climbing slowly and uh, steadily over the last uh, many years and we're expecting that to continue this year. Oh, and excuse me. Uh, I think I went right by, oh, page 44. Sorry, Ms. Mayor, I went right by the page numbers there. Okay, I think it was listed. Okay, there you go then. I guess. Uh, yeah, so we're anticipating motor vehicle registration. Hold on one second, Mr. Smith. Oh. It, the assumption on auto sales, I just was reading over the weekend that the expectation is not that they're going to be increasing. I guess maybe we're making it up by the, you probably know better than anyone here or used to know anyone. Well, probably, but yeah. yeah. Probably. In terms of what the average cost per vehicle is, but the number of vehicles is, is uh, somewhat uh, being suppressed. Yep. Um, and I guess just want to make sure we're not too aggressive on that line item in terms of we haven't taken that into account and to be honest right now it's in there 3.5 million dollars um initially it was in there actually no, it's in there at 3.6 hundred thousand dollar increase it was in the, that increase in one version of this budget was higher than that and i think the uh the city manager gave me the same advice that you just did <laughs> and we brought that down so uh we're seeing you know I wouldn't be surprised if it leveled off right now. Just looking at the numbers, we still see it, we still see it climbing. Uh, police special duty is going moving in the other direction. A decrease of about a hundred thousand dollars in the um, budget, and I'll say that's uh, I'd say entirely related to the sunsetting of the COVID-related special duty. Um, items, which of course the tail end of that were in the beginning of the current fiscal year. And so we're not anticipating that to, uh, of course, to move forward. Transfer station income, uh, in total, uh, anticipated increase of $172,000 uh, from 1.7 to 1.87. Most of that uh, reflective of new rates and in the demolition portion of the transfer station income. We're still seeing that uh, move up in in a very substantial way. Um, otherwise, we're anticipated increase of three hundred thousand dollars in interest earnings. Of course, part of the uh, inflationary item we're going through right now is that we're earning a lot more on our um, deposits than we were a year ago, and uh, but right now that appears to be still moving in a in a positive direction, and the budget assumes that. Um, on the flip side of the coin, payment and lower taxes, anticipated decrease of $31,000. Um, of course, in the normal course of events, taxes is a assessed valuation and rate, and they kind of balance each other out. In pilot, for the most part, the assessed valuation part is a static number. So when the rate goes down, the overall income goes down. And that's what we're seeing uh, with, with, the, with the pilot. So... Um, that's just, that's just where it is. Is there anything that you can do to offset that and prevent that from happening? I know it's not a significant amount, but it does seem to be counterintuitive. Uh, I, that, that is probably, uh, and I would say that is an entirely related to how the pilot agreements are negotiated. So that's where I turn more to the legal team <laughs> than, um, than that. I don't know, each, agree, each pilot agreement is different. Um, and each one is governed by, by a set written legal contract. Finally, uh, transfer some other funds. The budget calls for moving in $156,000 from uh, non-capital reserve, impact fees, the uh, grant that was just received for the Invest New Hampshire funds to help offset the uh, cost of expenses. Next, we move to page six, anticipated grants. Um, total of $2 million in grants, general operations, 1.8, a water department, a uh, million, excuse me, a water department of 182,000. And I'll say um, what we're gonna cover tonight is a couple words, kind of identifying the grant and the grant number. Any other questions or any other issues as far as is there a local match? 
what does it cover? Is it supplies? Is it equipment? Is it salaries? Those are all questions for the originating department. What is provided to us, to put in the budget, is just a placeholder in terms of title and dollars. You're not expecting us to collate that, are you? <laughs> no, but it, no, no, not at all, of course. Uh, but if, there, if that's information you're interested in, we'll reach out to the departments guess, and have them provide that information. I think you would want to know that and that you would want to collect that and have that and be able to share that with us as opposed to kind of leaving it loosey-goosey. <laughs> well, I'll tell you again, uh, relating to conversations that have happened over the last next few weeks, the next budget you receive a year from now will have that information. Um, I guess I don't understand why we can't have it for this one. <laughs> well, we could, we can have it by next week. No, no you, 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 you certainly can. And what the, the issue was that we ran into, and I, I can speak even from my department head time, is how we, when we put in the anticipated grants and what we presented or what was talked about, it's kind of all over the place, frankly. Um, so when this came up over the last month or two, we need to tighten how we do that up a little bit better. So you have better information, we have better information. There could be a grant out there where, hey, I'm hearing that there's a fire grant and this might be how much we can get, and so you just throw it in there as anticipated. It's not applied for yet, it's not even brought into the weed yet. We're trying to tighten up that procedure so you have your better information as do we. So you're not, just so, it's not just because you brought it up tonight, we've had these exact conversations. And, and, I, and I will say, Correct. And I will say, these are at this point anticipated grants. If the grant is awarded, they'll be coming back for you for acceptance of the grant. Um, but we can, we can pull that information together. That's, that's not an issue. Um, there's a listing of the fire, planning and water departments. As I say, this is everything except police. The next two slides are police, which tells you something about police anticipated grants. Um, Here's a listing of what they are expecting or expecting that may happen in, um, in 2023. Some of these are grants that, uh, actually I guess that's more on the next slide, grants that um, occur every year. And so they're, they're not new for what we're seeing. Some of them are, are new as, as they looked into the crystal ball and think this is the ones we think might come down the, down the line in 2024. Uh, anticipated grants, uh, slide two. Uh, here you see the familiar items, the DUI patrols, the, the COPS grant, the JAG grants that have been on the books for many years. Moving on to welfare, provides interim assistance to the basic needs for those who have not, do not have the resource to meet those needs, fulfills the city's obligations on RSA 165 as defined in the guidelines that the city council has adopted. I kind of, kind of hear uh, kind of the um, uh, logos for our community partners, and because I'll say most of welfare is those relationships with community partners. And that is really what keeps the, the welfare function going and, and vital within the community. Activity summary, we've had a 30, 333 contacts so far this year. We've provided financial assistance in 62 cases, serving 244 individuals and 131 vouchers. Uh, some, some, of course, folks will write multiple vouchers, so that's why you see that, that higher number. Um, and when we do assist people financially, it's typically for about 1.37 months. We try to be provide interim emergency assistance, sometimes interim gets stretched out. What we do with that money, 77% of the money we spend is on housing stability, rent, shelter, um, security deposit. That is mostly what we do in the welfare office and we're mostly where we spend the money. Um, reason for that, that's where the need is. Also, because a lot of the other services, food, clothing, et cetera, we have community partners who do an excellent job of providing that. And so the people don't come to us for that. Of the remaining 23%, most of that we, we fund is burials. Uh, required under state if somebody uh, passes away in the city of Laconia, cannot uh, provide for their own burial, the city is required to do that. 
and that's a 22 percent. Just give you a historical perspective. We'll see um, where the average annual expenses have been in welfare. We're seeing it kind of going all kind of all over the place. We're getting that um, uh, more organized, keeping a closer look at it. And we noticed it's starting to trend down just before COVID hit, but then of course COVID hit and, um, and the expenses uh, plummeted as the state and federal um, programs took over. And now of course we're seeing that head back up again now that those programs aren't there. Finally, page 119, the three tax increment financing districts. Downtown TIF recommended an increment of $359,000 to pay our payment on the 2015 um, improvement bond and the colonial bond, um, the, the colonial bond. Colonial Condo Association fees are pay, uh, recommended paid out of here, as is the paving for Beacon Street East parking lot and an ongoing expense for the security cameras in the parking garage. Lakeport recommended an increment of $25,000 for planning for future projects. Right now there isn't anything in, in the works for that, but uh, don't want to have to wait another year if, uh, as that coalesces. Finally, the Weirs recommended increment of $230,000 bond payment for the lakeside improvements and also some funds set aside for the Weirs dock reconfiguration next year. That concludes the presentation. I have only one thing to say, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm compelled to tell him that the zero through five tech support, there's a negative one. That's people like me who touch computers and they never work again. Just so you know. We're, we're going to keep you away from the network. Yeah, oh, yeah. sure. You, you yeah. notice I don't have a... You called me twice. Eh? That works on the... Uh... <laughs> Any other questions? No, I'm sorry. Mr. That's okay. It's okay. <coughs> we're, we're here <coughs> for you. <laughs> Mr. Smith, thanks very much for a very comprehensive Thank you. um, Thank presentation. You're welcome. Sorry for the length of that. Oh. I also did hand out earlier um, yes. just the, the flyer that we hand out for people wanting information on what. So, uh, what, what, what's your, what, thank you. What, what's your choice? Should we uh, go on to 6C Department with uh, Administration with City Manager? Should we put that off till the next meeting? Do the next meeting. Yeah. Um, and, and, and why don't we? Why don't we put that yeah. off? And um, I'd like to adjourn the. City Council budget meeting at 7 12 p.m. I'd like to uh, start the City Council meeting at 7 20 give everyone an opportunity